unconformities are the key features for dividing up the geological record. And we're going to have a look at this together using this map here. And we'll use the unconformity to provide a milestone that will allow us to separate a basement history from that within some sedimentary cover. So here's the geological map. And let's just pick out the unconformity, which we can see coming across here at the base of the Triassic rocks. And they overstep a whole series of different rocks over here on the southeast side of the map. So let's just draw it on so we know what we're talking about. Here it comes, something like this, around all these areas here, crosses the lake, back over here, across that little lake, and on out through the map like that. So there is our unconformity, our milestone that separates this geology from whatever's going on above the unconformity. Okay, so we're going to do an audit of the geology over here on the southeast side of the map, the basement area. So let's put a piece of card down here and over here another piece of card. And in these two areas we're going to list some processes and rocks over on this side and we'll place them in order on this one over here. So let's what we've got in here, well let's see what we've got. The components of this geology consist of metasediments, so that's sediments and metamorphism. Uh, we've got some granodiorite and some granite and we've also got the foliation, so to deformation as well, these little shears that offset some of the rocks. So let's capture some of this stuff. Uh, we've got some deformation, we've got some sediment deposition, um, we've got, um, what else have we got? We've got some granite, we've got some granodiorite, whoops, granodiorite in here, um, we've got some metamorphism as activities, and of course we've also got the unconformity and to get to that, we have to take these rocks from a metamorphic environment to have sedimentation on top. So we have to have uplift and exhumation, in other words, erosion of these rocks as well. So here are a whole bunch of things that we need to place in the correct order. Right, well, let's put our milestone on conformity in. And to have got to that, there has to be an uplift, exhumation and erosion of the underlying rocks. So we're going to work back in geological time like this. So what else can we see in here? Well, we've got two intrusions. We've got the granite and granodiorite, which I'll just put over here for now. We don't yet to work out what their relative order is. But we've also got these rocks are intrusive. And so they have to be intruding something, and that's the rocks around them, which are the metasediments. So we have to start off with metasediments that predate the intrusions. They're metasediments. So the first thing that must happen in this record is sediment uh, deposition, followed by metamorphism. So we know the first part of this here. So what comes next? Well, hmm, that's going to be quite interesting to sort out. But I can see that this material here, the, the granodiorite, is deformed. And this deformation then has, we've got, let's put this in, let's keep that to one side. There's the granodiorite, and the granodiorite has got deformation that follows it. So we go granodiorite and deformation. So what's the relationship of this deformation to the granite, which is our yet to be assigned uh, piece of geology? Well, here's the deformation. We see it's truncated by the granite contact here. So therefore the granite postdates the deformation. So we can, we, what we must have then is these three um, parts of the geological story must follow in that sequence. First the granodiorite, then the deformation, and then the granite. And the granodiorite intrudes the metamorphosed sediments. So we must have granodiorite, deformation, and then the granite. So we can simply order this history in this fashion. Well, that's the basement history. Now we need to turn our attention to what happens above the unconformity. So let's make space for that by moving this across. And we're going to establish another part of this that postdates the unconformity. So I'm just going to set this up like this. There we go. Ready for more geological record. 
Right, well, this story is going to start with the unconformity because we're moving into younger history. So let's put the unconformity at the base of this succession. And now we need to gather up what the geological processes might be that are recorded over here. Well, clearly there's sedimentation. So we might as well have um, some sediment deposition as one of our um, parts of our story. What else is going on? Well, I can see that we've got our Triassic rocks here that are above here. So there's clear deformation, there's a fault. So we've got deformation in here as well. Um, and what else can we see? Hmm. Well, pretty clearly in here, I can see that they're Eocene rocks, so the very youngest that we've got in, the, in this succession, sitting directly on Trias. So there's something else going in here. And if these Jurassic strata um, were deposited in here, they've been eroded. So I'm going to put some erosion as part of our story. And maybe there's some more deformation as well. So we're going to have uh, multiple processes. In fact, maybe we should add some um, more sediment deposition into this process too. So what happens above the unconformity in here? Well, the unconformity is overlain by Triassic rocks in here, and those Triassic rocks are in turn overlain by, from the key, this Jurassic succession. So following the unconformity, we have sediment deposition. Now, there's also deformation because these rocks are deformed. So somewhere after that, there's deformation. I'm gonna put that deformation up here. So we don't get confused as to what's going on. Let's simply say what these various units are that are in here. So the sediment deposition at the bottom is Triassic through Jurassic. What age is that deformation though? Well, I can see there's deformation that postates the Eocene rocks because the Eocene rocks are cut or truncated by the tectonic contact. So there's some deformation that's quite young in here that postdates the Eocene. So I'm gonna put some Eocene sediment deposition here, like this. So the question is, is that now a complete story? Well, we need to explain what's going on here about the Eocene rock sitting directly on the Triassic. Well, there's several ways of explaining that. One is to suggest that these Jurassic rocks were originally overlaying the Trias here all the way through and then have been eroded away, and then there's been deposition of the Eocene. So option one is that there's been erosion in here. So that's one option. But of course, the alternative is that in this particular area, there was never any deposition, and it was a hiatus between the deposition of the Trias and the deposition of the Eocene. So an alternative is non-deposition. And given the information on the map, we cannot resolve this uh, problem. So let's just keep them both in the story. So that's our history. Let's just put it all together finally. Let's move this away. Okay, well, let's do it. Let's just establish a continuous geological history. And what we'll do is we'll move uh, this piece on top. So the unconformity sits on top of the unconformity there. Tidy it up in a second. Uh, we'll put our erosion or non-deposition in there. We'll put our Eocene rocks back up here. There's the Triassic, uh, Jurassic, and there is our geological history. We can put our old at the bottom, and there is Time's Arrow. So a simple way of putting geological events and elements of the geology into a sequence, a stratigraphy that shows how the geology has evolved through time.